Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're actually going to be looking at Casper versus Alethium. So in this video, we're not going to be strictly comparing on who's the best. We're just going to do a strict comparison of certain metrics, which I've put together, as you can see on this document, but we're going to link it through and we're going to check out and link back through some web links. And if you actually want to download this for your own use, just to, you know, research around, I guess, then you can download it. There's a link in the description with the hyperlinks as well listed so you can click through there and actually do your own research into both of these coins now the reason that i'm picking both of them is because i've been with casper coin for about nine months now since we discovered it and alethium for around three or four months and there's quite similar architecture in that they both use dags but alethium uses it in a different way and casper is just strictly a dag coin but we're going to go through and look at the metrics now so the first one, as you can see there, transactions per second. So Casper does around 400 and so does Alethium. Now, I've also noted at the side because there are some updates which are coming and there's tested 2500 and that was on the Rust testnet. However, when we click on the hyperlink here, so I've got it all linked up and we scroll down to the information, we can see that we're actually at 6400 to 20,000 TPS. That is at 32 blocks per second to 100 blocks per second. So right now, Casper on the test net only did 10 blocks per second, which is giving you around 2,500 TPS. When it comes to Alethium, they actually have a potential of 10,000, but it's still in theory. So this is why I'm saying it's been tested on the test net for 2,500, but with Alethium, it's not actually tested fully. It's still in theory right now. When we click on the hyperlink, it says this DAG structure or this um, merge between the DAG structure and the sharding called block flow will actually allow up to 10,000 transactions per second, currently more than 400 transactions per second on the Alethium chain. So very similar transactions per second right now, but the potential for Casper coin is around 20,000. That's like upper potential. And I believe for Alethium, the upper potential is 10,000. But as I said, still in theory. Now moving down to transaction time. So I actually had done speed tests on both of these coins on the channel and you can check them out if you have a search around. They're only like 30 second videos. However, with Casper coin, obviously it's around one second. They try to fully confirm in around 10 seconds. However, the transaction on the actual chain will register in around one second because that is the block time. And with the lithium, it's four seconds. So when I actually did the speed test, Casper did it in around three seconds. And that is probably based on internet connection and not necessarily on the chain. But with Alethium, it took around eight and a half seconds. And as I said, that's probably to do with internet and it will probably be completed in four seconds on the chain. So when it comes to transaction time, Casper coin, obviously, if we use it as a currency, the one second transaction time is not actually going to change. Even with the Rust update, that is just... TPS which is going to change not the block time that's going to change so same with Alethium there's always going to be four second block times for Alethium and there's always going to be around one second block times for Casper coin there's just going to be more blocks on the chain so both very fast transaction times but obviously if you want to be using it as a payment processing currency then Casper coin would be your best bet just because it can process a little bit faster than Alethium. Now, one of the main things that I do cover on the channel is mining coins, and both of these are mineable coins, GPU and ASIC mineable, technically. If we start off with Casper coin, it's built on K-heavy hash, that's the algorithm, very efficient for mining and processing transactions. The difference between GPU and ASICs is very substantial when compared to Bitcoin mining with a GPU and an ASIC. What I mean by that is as soon as ASICs came on board, it basically eliminated GPU mining. So they were super efficient when compared to GPUs. Now, when that transition happened for Bitcoin, it wasn't as substantial. There was still kind of a merge between them. Even with Ethereum, we had GPUs and ASICs on the same network and they were still bringing in profits. So you can kind of see the stark difference between GPU to ASICs on Casper coin. It basically eliminated out all the GPUs. And as I said, already reached full progression to ASICs, which is a big thing because Normally, GPU coins will go from GPU to FPGAs to ASICs, and that happens over some time. And you can kind of gauge there if that progression is happening at a fast rate, if a coin is going to basically take off because there's more investment, I would say, from the ASIC companies to get into this coin. 
Emissions for mining are based on a curve over time. So if we click through to the hyperlink here, we can actually see the whole emission schedule. And we are currently around here. So right now the reward is around 146 Casper coin. In the next bull run that we're projecting, it's going to be around 36 Casper coin per block. All of the Casper coin will be mined. Let's have a look at 2037 and the reward will be 0.014 Casper coin. So as you can see, that is going to be on an emission schedule curve. If we actually click back, you can see here, no strict block halving. When we click on the link, you can actually see the emission curve right there on the Casper coin website. Now, when we move on to Alephium, it's built on Blake 3. That is the algorithm, slightly more efficient than K-heavy hash. It's less power to mega hash ratio on the respective algorithms on the GPUs. No progression to ASICs yet, but there have been FPGAs floating around, no widely available bitstreams. So normally if there's a widely available bitstream, it will come through Team Redminer. However, there are some people at least starting to develop or at least tried to develop Alephium FPGAs in the past. So there's probably people out there that are trying to because it would be very profitable, I believe, right now more than a GPU. As it says here, this project did not achieve the quality we expect and is not under development anymore. Please don't use this as reference implementation for an FPGA miner. Now, I believe that there's a very big person in the FPGA community called Wolf Zero. Well, it has a zero in the name. Uh, he developed an FPGA miner as well. I've seen that floating around. So you could look out for that. But I don't think that there's any official bit streams out there for FPGA mining. I know some people probably do have them, but right now it's not widely available. Emissions are based in ranges dependent on the hash rate. So you would obviously account for difficulty on the network as well. But once it hits one echo hash, the proof of less work will be triggered. So you can see the ranges here actually. When we scroll down, if we keep going down here, you can see that the ranges are from zero hash to one peta hash. So we're still in this range right now. I believe we're at 60 or 70 tera hash. And the minor rewards increase gradually from 0 to 60, shared between the 16 chains. So you have to do 60 divided by 16 to actually get the actual block reward at the time, with a minimum of 30 guaranteed. So I believe that's 3.75, and this is 2.25. So as I said, currently in this range, and then when the hash rate hits over 1 peta hash, the reward gradually decreases from 60, which is going to be 3.75, down to 20, which is, I think, 1.25 per block. And then lastly, when it goes from one echo hash to 128 echo hash, the reward gradually decreases from 20, so 1.25 down to zero, which would obviously be zero per block. I believe that this happens over around a period of 82 years, if you calculate it out, and I believe that there's some literature on the website about that as well. So one thing I want to note about mining as well, that once this happens, as in the proof of less work, there will be a barrier of entry to mine. You actually have to have a lithium to mine a lithium once this proof of less work gets triggered, which is going to be in a while depending on the FPGA slash ASIC progression. This is done through burning if we look here. So it says you get 1.25 a lithium, which is obviously the minimum, which would be 20 a lithium per block period. So 20 divided by 16 of the minor reward by spending 0.15 a lithium in equipment energy costs and then burning 0.85 a lithium. So you actually have to have a lithium enable to start mining a lithium once proof of less work is actually triggered. But that's going to be a while and there will be a barrier of entry to mine. But at that point, I think it will be ASICs on the network if it ever comes to that position. Now, when it comes to tech, Casper and Lithium both share some of the same tech. One is fully DAG, which is Casper coin. And the other one works with DAG to reach a consensus between sharding. So sharding has been a slightly new thing in the crypto space where you basically have lanes on a highway and you can open up more lanes, which is more shards for more transactions and then it all gets completed or they reach a consensus between the shards and they're using DAG to do this. So when we click here, this is actually a post from Harama Biff. You can check that out. It says here, sharding is a strategy of database management that splits large databases into smaller, faster, more easily managed sections. These smaller parts are called shards. So that's why it's called sharding. It says sharding breaks up the main blockchain into separate segments and the nodes verify on a subset of transactions, allowing for parallel transactions. 
This increases the network throughput and the consensus is reached through the DAG that they're using as well. It's called the block flow algorithm to manage the whole thing. So that's what sharding is. There's a slight difference between the two. As I said, Casper is fully DAG, but Alephium utilizes the DAG to reach a consensus between the shards. Alephium right now has smart contracts, which is native and have been used already in the AN app. So I've made a video on AN app before. It's a swap app, basically bring in liquidity life on Alephium. You can check out the video I made on that if you want as well. Casper has smart contracts in the pipeline. If we click here, we can see that they've written about smart contracts. Currently, they haven't really set out too much about smart contracts, as in they either have two possible integration concepts, either native smart contracts or as a sequencing layer done on Ethereum, as I said there, which could either be native or built on ETH. Nothing is built on Casper coin yet because of the smart contracts, but Alephium does have some D apps, which I've mentioned earlier, like AN or Wolf, which is basically an Alephium lottery. So you can buy a ticket and they'll draw the prizes and you can get certain different prizes from different ones that you sign up to. Just as an overall, the tech between both have been written in extensive papers with complicated maths. So both of the papers that are written for Alephium and for Casper coin, both have extensive maths in them, which outline, you know, how the DAG works or how proof of less work works or how the sharding works to reach a consensus. This is one of the main things that I look for in cryptocurrencies, at least if they have some sort of math or complicated mathematics in their actual white papers. It kind of alludes to the fact that they put some time into this and they've actually put some effort into building up the tech. I know it's not just a straight marker, but it's very good to see on a white paper. A lot of these coins that I'm researching, if I go into a coin, it'll normally just have a white paper saying this is Bitcoin and it's built on that consensus and that's it. And it doesn't really explain any of the maths behind it. Now, when it comes to market cap, Casper coin is sitting at around 1 billion at 44th place in terms of the whole cryptocurrency sphere. I think it's actually above it because of this price increase from Bitcoin. Uh, but I did link this around two days ago when I made the actual sheet for this. So that's at 44 with around a billion market cap and Alephium is at around 10 million sitting at 882nd place. So if we open this, we can see what well, is actually at around 10, 9.9 .9 million right now. And it's sitting at 844th place in terms of all cryptocurrencies. Lastly, when it comes to supply, we already checked that out on the first kind of part of it with the mining emissions, as we can see there. 28 and a half billion, so around, this is the exact number, but I just put around at that point. Alephium is around 1 billion, so there are some tokens that will definitely be burned through the proof of less work, but some of the Alephium coins are also locked for pre-allocation around 140 million. So when we look at the tokenomics page for Alephium, we can scroll down and see that at mainnet launch, an initial supply of 140 million tokens was minted within the Genesis block, and then that leaves 860 million Alephium to be mined. So they're actually distributing it between development, sales, ecosystem, stuff like that. If we scroll down, you can actually see how every quarter, some of it is unlocked for the Alephium team for either team and treasury, ecosystem, and sales. But when it reaches 140 million, that will be the amount that basically all of these will get overall. And then there's 860 million Alephium to be mined in the next 82 years from 2021. And lastly, to compare, we have what's in development. So for Casper coin, when we click here, we can see all the developments for Casper coin. We have the Dagnite consensus, which has been completed, upgrade consensus to follow Dagnite protocol, that's in development, testing the Casper Rust language coding, which is the upgrade for the blocks per second. The mobile wallet has been completed, further increased blocks per second and transactions per second through Rust, integrate Casper use on Ledger, develop the 2023 white paper, archival node improvements, and smart contract implementation. This is all that they've got in development. And overall, a lot of things to be completed still, but I think it will be done around 2025 at the latest for all of these. Now, when it comes to actual Alephium development, we can see we have the mobile wallet, Alephium bridge launch, which is gonna actually bridge Alephium to Ethereum, library of dApps, Introduction of API, Improved Web 3, 
multi-sig support, standard for transaction information display on the wallet, smart contract in support in the Explorer. So when you're actually looking at the Alephium Explorer, if we look here, you could actually track smart contracts through this. They don't currently have it right now, but there will be support in the future. Better DevX and more functionalities for the Ralph language, which is the coding language, design and implement light nodes. Then when it comes to the ecosystem, Ambassador program has already been launched, grant program, first Alethium hackathon, CEX listings, integration with third-party wallets, additional bridges to other ecosystems, launch of third-party dApps, which we've already seen, additional marketing and partnerships, ledger wallet integration, and website revamp. So this is what we've got in development for both coins. Overall, I think the Casper coin obviously has a bigger market cap, a bigger audience. Alethium is still growing, even though it was made around, I want to say six months or at least launched six months before Casper coin. However, we've seen some growth on obviously Casper coin, but we've seen some growth on Alethium for the past, I'd say around seven months. Since a lot of miners have been looking for coins to make profits on, as Casper coin gets unprofitable for GPU miners. So Alephium has been one of them, Radiant, Nexa, all those little ones that we've seen, they'll probably have some price increases over the next coming months or the next year and a half. Now, as I said, I'm not gonna give my opinion on which one's better. This is strictly just a comparison for you guys to actually learn about both of them and kind of compare in your own head which one you wanna mine. I'd say Alephium, if you have GPUs, go for Alephium. If you have FPGAs and ASICs, just mine on Casper coin. That's a very simple way of me putting it. If FPGAs do come to Alephium in a widely available bitstream, I would switch your FPGAs over to Alephium and not on Casper coin because you'd probably be more profitable on Alephium than Casper coin because the ASICs are so efficient. So that's it for the video, guys. If you did enjoy, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you've got any more information you want to add to this, you can actually still download it from the description below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this.